father. We can call him daddy. We can call him father. He's the father of all fathers. He is that prince of peace. Mm. He's the everlasting God. For in Psalms 55 and 17, it says, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Most wise and heavenly Father, Lord God, we just come giving you praise on this morning, God. But there's nobody like you, Jesus. Oh, God, we ask that you search our hearts on this morning, oh, God. And if there's anything in us that's not of you, God, we ask that you remove it right now with the blood of Jesus. Oh, God, we come against every hindering spirit that will keep this service from going forth, oh, God. Oh, Father God, I ask that you touch those watching via live stream, oh, God. Touch in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Move by your spirit. Move by your power, oh God. Father God, I live up Oak Grove Church in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I lift up the deacons, oh God. I lift up the trustees, God. I lift up the mothers. I lift up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I lift up all the members, oh God. I lift up all the youth, oh God. I lift up the musicians, God. The media ministry, oh God. The armor bearers, oh God. God, I lift up the man of God, the shepherd of this house, our pastor, Pastor Cobb, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you just touch him from on high, oh God. Lord God, as he brings forth the word, oh God, let it be a dunamis, dunamis word, with dunamis power, oh God. That someone will cry out, what must I do to be saved, oh God. Oh God, we're believing you for miracles, signs, and wonders. We're believing you for breakthroughs on today. We're believing you, oh God, for salvation, oh God. Bless this community, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Look upon this nation, oh God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Touch the sick and the afflicted, oh God. Touch the bereaved families, God. Touch those who are dealing with. COVID-19, oh God. Lord God, we bind up racism in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, for you are looking for a church without spot or wrinkle, oh God. Let us be the church. Let us be ready, oh God. We thank you this day. Oh God, who in this worship service like you've never moved
hour of prayer will be on this Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you need prayer or you're looking for a church home, please do not hesitate to contact us. If you would like to sow a seed into our ministry, you can do that via Cash App or Givelify. The information is located on our Facebook and YouTube web page. We thank God for you. We praise God for you. And we are praying for you. The next voice you shall hear is that of our pastor, Pastor Cobb, as he comes forth to bring what thus saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of God. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are still rejoicing in it, and we are glad. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you who have decided to join us virtually on today uh, as it relates to our platforms on Facebook and YouTube. Thank God for our essential staff that continue to do what they do here in Oak Grove to make sure uh, that you have access to our experiences. And so we thank God for our essential team and those that uh, keep our ministry afloat, even in the midst of crisis and pandemic. We thank God for all things. Thank God for uh, our evangelist Sims for navigating us, amen, through our worship, amen. Thank God for our evangelist Sims, amen, and certainly to all of uh, those uh, of the household of faith, amen. Thank God for, um, again, uh, our musicians, and they're not start but, uh, calling out specific uh, persons, Amen. But we'll just group them together and say our essential team. And so we thank God for our essential team that continue to do what you do. Thank God for my mother. Amen. For being a man. Amen. We are. Amen. Thank God for her. Amen. So we thank God for all things. Uh, he has been good and uh, we are indebted to him for what he has done for us. Amen. It is our desire and hope that you will be blessed. Amen. That you will be um, energized, rejuvenated, and replenished as you tune into, amen, our broadcast on today. Amen. Uh, from the Word of God on today, we're going to go into the Word of God, St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. The Gospel as it is recorded by St. Luke, chapter 22. Amen. St. Luke, chapter 22. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. St. Luke, the 22nd chapter, we want to Look at a few of the verses there. St. Luke, uh, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. Amen. St. Luke 22 and the 31st verse from the King James Version. And it reads, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as we. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, yes, yes, strengthen brother. thy brother. Yes. Father, we thank you for this word. Bless your word, bless your people. Thank you, Lord. Find Satan that he has no power. But God allow this word to be a rainbow yes. word that will speak to us yes, in sir. our situations. Yes. To know that you're still God, yes, you're still Lord. able, yes, and you still have all power in your hand. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read that again for your consideration from New King James Version. Uh, thank you so much, those that admonished, amen, uh, those that recognize the Word of God. Uh, St. Luke, the 12th or the 22nd chapter, the 31st verse from the New King James Version, and it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you yes, sir. that he may sift you like wheat. as wheat. Uh -huh. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. I want to talk from this subject, amen, and I know that, um, and I want to say that it is very dangerous to be around the couple or in the presence of someone that has uh, nothing to lose. Those people that have nothing to lose but do and say anything. Uh, so hanging around with people that have nothing to lose, amen, is a dangerous thing. Amen. But I want to remind you that on today 
that we have too much to lose. Too much to lose. Somebody's dependent on you to make it. Somebody's dependent on you to hang in there. And I know you feel like you may be in a corner somewhere and nobody's concerned about you. But somebody's expecting for you to make it. Amen. Not only do we overcome by, amen, the blood of the Lamb, but by the word of our testimony. Uh, I know sometimes we feel like we're the underdog and, amen, that others are advancing further than, uh, farther than we. But I want to tell you on today uh, and remind you that the, that the race was never given to the swift <laughs> anyway. So it don't matter how fast you go, but it matters if you end. Amen. It don't matter how you start, but it matters how you end. Amen. Somebody's hitting on the back, amen, and I've been in church all my life, but the question is, you've been, amen, you may have been in the church all your life, but has the church been in you, amen, and so I want to remind you on today that we have too much to lose. Now, there has been a new trend that has developed in our church, uh, Universal, which consists of a new belief of selfishness, uh, selfishness and individualism. Uh, yes, this Trends suggest that while we can come to church, we are admonished uh, to embrace uh, one another, uh, even on virtual platforms. But the reality is that you really, uh, sometimes we're reaching or we're in a place now to where uh, people are not really concerned about their neighbor. Uh, uh -huh, yeah, let me, let me uh, work on this for just a moment. We, we live in a day of theology that proclaims that I've uh, come to get mine, and so you better get yours to the point that we have lost the accountability and responsibility of genuine love and concern. We have lost the responsibility to be our brother's keeper. Uh -huh, we have lost the responsibility to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And that's a deep question to ask. Do you really love your neighbor as you love yourself? Mm -hmm. we, we have lost the, the responsibility of accountability. Now, I, I get mine, and you better do your best to get whatever you can. However, when you investigate the text that I have read in your hearing, and when you understand that the very nature of how God did everything, God, right from the beginning of creation, suggested to us through the manner of which he created that everything is interconnected and related. Yes, God does things by relationship and interconnectedness. And Jesus in this passage of scripture gives us another example of the responsibility of community. This was not Jesus just merely giving Simon Peter a warning of the devil's intention. But if you dig deeper in the text, you'll see that Jesus was up to something much bigger. They're sitting around the Lord's table, right. having the Lord's supper. The table alone represents community. And I don't understand how people want to sit down at a table of brotherhood, but only want to sit down with a table with folks that look like you. I wish somebody would help me this out. If we're going to sit down and end social injustice, we might sit down with folks that don't look, smell, talk, walk, act like us. But the problem is sometimes when people don't do as we want them to do, act as we want them to act, I wish somebody would help me in this house, we push people aside. But the only way we're going to, and I know somebody was saying that racism is not in the, I didn't, I didn't intend to go this way, but racism is not in the mind, it's, uh, or it's not in the heart, it's in the mind. I want to tell you, how do we end uh, a systemic racism and prejudices? We all got to ask the Lord to give us a clean heart. Yes, sir, when you cannot sit down and be concerned about somebody else, I want to tell you, you have not the love of Christ abiding in you. But when you love like Jesus loved, I heard the Bible say that he'll leave the 99 just to go get the one. And some of us are so concerned with me, myself, and I that we're concerned as long as I got. I'm, I'm doing good as long as my family's doing well. But let's forget uh, that as the time continues to go on, uh, difficulty and storms and trials and tribulations will knock at your door. You won't fast substantially all the time. Uh, there's going to come a time and place where there's going to be some hardship that you're going to have to face. And when you face that hardship, you're going to need somebody <laughs> to lean on. I know we've got to this point. As long as I got Jesus, I don't need nobody else. But let me tell you something. You're going to need Jesus and somebody else. Why? Because we are helpers of one another. So 
We reach this new theology of uh, selfishness. And prior to the text, the disciples were having a discussion on who would be Jesus' successor. Yeah, they were discussing who had next. They knew that Jesus was going to leave them, but he had not chosen anyone to succeed him. Let me tell you that whenever your priority is power, you always cancel community. Uh, when you always try to be the top dog, you cancel community. You try to trump somebody else, you will never get ahead in life and really be successful trying to have a crab mentality, trying to keep somebody else down so you can go up because don't you know God has snatched that rug right from under your feet and make that thing, that's why you gotta watch how you dig tickets and set traps for other folks because time, God will let that thing boomerang and come right back to you. Uh, let me tell you that, so when our priority is power, you cancel community. When your priority is who's in charge, you will always find yourself diluting your responsibility for your assignment. And, uh, uh, and I hope we understand and pray for Lord. We've been in this pandemic for a while now, but I hope that nobody in the house of God is still trying to fight for a position. Because God has taken us out of church and some of us was hung up on a position. Uh, yes, sir, uh, because you thought that you were the head of the trustee board. You thought that you were the head of the people board. You thought that you were the head usher that the book stopped with you. So God took us all out the church uh, to let us know that you ain't in charge. Uh, I'm in charge. Lord, help me in this house. Uh, and some of us still ain't got it yet. Because uh, we still hate for her. We still contrary her. Uh, still got a nasty attitude her. Uh, and that's why I'm asking God, uh, let this thing ride her. Uh, So Jesus 
after you as to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you. And if you read this in the original Greek Kanoa text, what the original text will convey to you is that Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as wheat. But I pray in this for you. Let me say that again. In the original text, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan is after y'all, plural, to sift y'all, plural, as wheat. But I pray singular for you. Uh, he says, Satan desires to sift all of y'all as wheat. But I didn't pray for y'all. I only pray for you. If Satan is after everybody, why does Jesus only pray for one person? The reason that Jesus prayed for Simon, and I hope somebody would help me, uh, oh, I hope somebody would get this here. The reason that Jesus prayed for Simon is because he named him the rock. And he's the one that's the strongest in the group. He's the one that's supposed to have more sense than everybody else. So Jesus says, Simon, I'm praying for you. Because when Satan comes after y'all, you'll be the first to get up. And when you get up, I need you to get everybody else who couldn't get up as quick as you could. In other words, Simon, you've got to keep it together. Because if the devil gets you, he gets all of y'all. So I need you to get yourself together. Why? Because you have too much inside of you to lose. On the day of the day, some of us are struggling with being the leader. Praise the Lord in our families. Because we didn't ask the Lord to be the strongest in our family. And you get tired of folks coming to you all the time. You get tired of I was somebody help me down through here. You get folks tired of pulling on you all the time. And then when you drink, you don't have nobody to go to. But there's a blessing even with being a leader. Because I'd rather be the strongest than the weakest. And God is counting on you to be the glue that keeps the family together. I know you're tired. I know you want to give up. But let me tell you something. You got two generations that's depending on you. You got nephews and nieces, grandchildren and great grandchildren that's depending on you. And that's why you can't give up now. I know you're tired. I know you're frustrated. But you got to learn how to hang on in there. So Simon, Simon, there's a blessing and a burden in leading. Because most of the time when we're leading, we didn't ask the Lord to be a leader. I didn't ask God. I'm a raise the past. I asked God, praise the Lord, to even preach. I was fine with being a trustee. But God has a way of anointing and appointing who he chooses, praise the Lord, to be the leader in the group. And that's why I don't get upset when folks try to come up against you. Because with all the sweat, all the blood and tears that I've had to go through, and given me some endurance, and given me the anointing, you may not see it, but the struggle that I had to go through, it made me who I am. So when you come up against me, you're not coming up against my average Joe, but you're coming up against a mighty man. Praise the Lord. Uh, 
those uh, that's counting on you uh, so you can't clock out. Uh, you got to learn uh, how to hang on in there. Uh, you got to learn uh, how to endure. Uh, you got to learn uh, to hold on. Uh, say yeah. So, 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 Simon, if he gets you, he'll get everybody else. So, 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 let me encourage you that our leaders that have the burden of leadership. Let me tell you, God is cutting away, uh huh, through a path, uh huh, to lead you beside, uh -huh, not just uh, waters, but still waters. Uh, God is cutting the path for you right now uh, to lead you beside green pastures. Uh, and let me tell you something, uh, your deliverance uh, is not as long uh, as it has been. Uh, I can't break down because uh, I got to break through uh, so I don't have time uh, to be talking about stuff uh, that don't concern me uh, because I got heaven uh, in my view. Uh, I got some work. Uh, I got some work to do. Uh, so excuse me uh, if I don't come to your cookie to talk. Uh, excuse me uh, if I don't come to your cookout. Uh, excuse me uh, if I don't come to your fish fry. Uh, some parties uh, I can't go to. Uh,
somebody that said, wait, listen, where are you talking about this? Matthew 16 and 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. Uh huh. Go ahead. Go, 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 yeah, read, read for you. In other words, you will no longer be called Simon, but you will be called Peter. Well, in our text, Jesus calls him by the very name that he said he no longer was. Jesus is the one that says, your name is no longer Simon. All right. And then he turns around and calls him by the name. The very name that he said, I'm not going to call you by. Now, Jesus is not uh, what you would consider to be bipolar. <laughs> Jesus understands who he's talking to. Jesus, you said, praise the Lord, his name is Peter. Because Peter means rock. Peter represents the person that can hear divine revelation. Peter represents the person who has spiritual insight. And Jesus is saying, I call Simon because I don't need to talk to Peter right now. I need to talk to Simon because I need Peter to know I don't care how strong he is. There's still some Simon left in him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we be honest with ourselves, we can come to the conclusion that there's some Simon left in all of us. If you don't believe it, let somebody catch you on the wrong day at the wrong time. Uh huh. And say the wrong thing at the wrong right time. <laughs> yes, sir. Some of us know how to speak in tongues other than as the Spirit gives us the hug. <laughs> yeah, you ain't speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives you letters all your life. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, let, me, let me go on here. All I'm trying to tell you is there's some Simon and all of us. And the truth of the matter, that that same tongue that will speak in another language to God, right. if the right wrong time happens, will cuss you out. Right. Yes, it will. I'm not saying that's what you should do. Yes, it will. I'm not condoning that. But what I'm saying is that there's Simon left in all of us. And some of us, I, you know, I'm so wrapped up in God, tied up, tangled up. He's got a hook at me, and I don't want to get loose. Some of us say that when church folks is around. But then when the, the, when the saints are around, we, we ain't saying that because we're so bad, busy getting loose. Let me tell you something. If when you get rooted and grounded in Christ, you realize how to be realistic with yourself. You understand the new you. And you realize the old you. Yes, sir. Uh, that's why we have to crucify our flesh daily. Because there's some, there's some stuff that the old me still like. With some help me in this house. Yes, sir. There, there's some stuff that the old me still may want to see. So I've got to ask the Lord to allow the spirit to crucify the flesh. Jesus. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That's one of the reasons, that's one of the issues in the church universal. We're no longer transparent. So when we get saved, I've been saved all my life. And so you got saved, and I ain't talking about nobody, but you got saved when you were in your late 30s, after you had had your children. And uh, because you've been in God for the last 20 years, all of a sudden, when a young lady gets pregnant in the church, you're ready to throw her out. Forget the fact that was you 40 years ago. And if somebody had mercy on you, you ought to have mercy on somebody else. Come on. Some of us have the same testimony that I have. Thank God. Because guess what? There was some stuff. I'm being transparent. This, this message today ain't for deep. <laughs> this ain't for deep. <laughs> because when you want to get the little, you got to be honest with yourself. <laughs> because there's some stuff that I did and you did too. <laughs> and uh, thank God you didn't get caught. <laughs> Watch out. That's why I learned to pray for folks. Because there's some stuff that God didn't expose me on. God knows he could have brought you to an open shame with your sanctified self. But thank God he had mercy on you. Somebody ought to give the Lord a hand. I'm going pray for grace and mercy. So don't let the old person mess up the new purpose. I got to hurry up and get out of here. 
Uh, Simon, Simone, <laughs> be careful. This is the second thing the text teaches us. There are moments where God will give divine permission for satanic purposes. All right. uh, but there, there are moments where God will give, okay, uh, let me tell you. Uh, Job chapter 1, the sons and daughters came to the presence of God. Satan came with them. And uh, uh, let me just, uh, I, I'm going to pull the call, but I promise to keep the motor running. Uh, and I got a full tank of gas, so don't worry about us knocking off. Uh, yeah. Uh, because what, what that text in Job is suggests that you can never come to God in a holy moment without satanic presence. All right, all right. Don't think that the devil won't come to prayer me. That's why the mother used to say, help me drive Satan away. Because the devil will show up to prayer me. And guess what? I don't mind showing up because when I can see him, I can cast him out. I was somebody with him in this house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us act like the devil never roll with us. No way. But let me, let me work here. Uh, so, so, so what is this to, to suggest is that you never have a holy moment where there's not Satanic presence. Satan is always in the midst. God says, Satan, where have you been? Satan right. replied, was saying, from going to and from the earth, from walking up and down it. God says, oh, you don't know anybody. Satan says, I don't have anybody. God says, have you even considered my servant Job? He's faithful. He's committed. Uh, he's, he has integrity. Satan says, yeah, but you got a hedge around him. Uh, and yeah, that's why the reason why some of us ain't been affected by this pandemic. And you still live your blessed life and best life, uh, even in the midst of social injustice and COVID-19, is because God has put a hedge. I just want to go like this. Uh, God has put a hedge uh, over me. Uh, God has put a hedge uh, going to my brother in California over him. Uh, I wish I would to help me realize uh, and help me tell them uh, you can't touch this uh, because God has put a hedge over me. So, 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 let me, let me, let me work here. So, so, uh, he says he's faithful, he's committed, have to tell you. He says he's got a head on him. You see, the only way that Satan knows that there is a hedge is if he's been trying to get to Job. Yeah, some of us look over that in the text. Uh, see, see, when we, we spend so much time whining over what the devil does to us, we, we ought to be celebrating about the times that he came after us and you never found out because when he came God just covered you yes sir that's why I thank God for day to see and unseen so God says I'm putting him on the table have your way but with a few restrictions God gave the devil permission to mess with Job you see it in the text watch this Simon Simon Satan has asked Talk to you that's virtually in your bed or at your table. Yes, sir. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked. Uh, he cannot just show up and bully his way into your life. Amen. The only way he gets into our lives is if he gets a permission slip from God's desk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if God gives him permission, yes, it's because God has already equipped you with everything that you need to go through it and come out with a victory. I want somebody to help me this out. Yeah, you got to understand that the devil has to go by God's permission desk or God's desk and get a permission slip. See, you think that the hardship is because the devil messes with you. No, no, devil just messing with me. No, no, no. The devil has gone by God's desk and God has literally given the devil a permission slip saying, go ahead, get him. But, but when he comes, he like a flood. Guess what God said? I'm going to lift up a standard. And you can't go but just so far. So the reality is, I don't care what you're going through. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. Now that you type it, if you're watching Facebook, YouTube, I've got the victory. There isn't one struggle in your life that God hasn't already got you ready for. So anything that happens in your life, uh-huh, and I'm running out of time, that God hasn't already got, got you ready for. 
So anything that happens in your life, you need to face it knowing that you have the victory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God will see you through it. Because he's given me enough faith, grace, and mercy, and favor to handle whatever comes my way. Now, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as weak, but I prayed for you. That your faith not fail. He said that I'm praying for, is that the faith I taught you don't fail when the battle comes. Simon the devil tries so hard to make you forget that you already know. So my prayer is when it gets, when it gets rough, that your faith will stand up and you will remember what you all Ready to have. There is nothing that can happen to you that catches God off guard. I want you to hear that. So some of us, Lord, take it away. Don't you know God allowed it to happen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He gave the devil permission. Yes. So instead of you asking the Lord to take it away, you ought to ask the Lord to help you understand and realize you got victory. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Uh, so, so, so thank God. That we still have the victory. So, so Satan desires to sift you as wheat. Uh, but I've already prayed for you. So I gave you two points. We'll get the third one here. God provides the answer before Satan ever presents the problem. Point number three, God provides the answer before Satan ever presents the problem. So the first thing is that the text teaches us don't allow your old person to mess up your new purpose. Right. Yeah. The second is uh, that there are moments where God will give divine permission right. for satanic purposes. And then uh, as we prepare to call, God provides the answer before Satan ever presents the problem. And some of y'all should have started shouting when you heard that because the, re the reality is this. Before the problem ever happens in your life, God has already created the solution to the problem. Look at the text. Simon, Simon, Satan asked for y'all that he might sift y'all as wheat. But I pray for you that your faith fail not. And we Oh, you got the Bible open because that's where we're preaching from. And when, when. not if, uh, when. not I hope, yes. not suppose, yes. but when you return. He says that Satan is coming to get you, but I need you to know before he shows up, I've already told you that you're going to bounce back. Listen, before your problem ever shows up, Jesus has said, when you return, before your problem ever gets in your life, he says, uh, uh, when you return, now, now I know this may seem crazy, but two people uh, ought to shout on that because uh, you ought to shout over the fact that you got a problem that has not even shown up yet. Why? Uh, because even with the problem, God has already given you the answer. So you got to learn how to praise God even in the midst of a hot situation. Got to learn how to praise Him. Hallelujah. Like you know that you're coming out. Shout like you know you already have the victory. And I wish somebody would give a virtual high five and tell somebody uh, when I come out. You see, when I come out, I'm going to take my family back. When I come out, I'm going to open up that business. When I come out, I will be healed. When I come out, I will have joy. And you ought to shout because Jesus has already declared that what's coming cannot take you out. And is there anybody here that's glad that you know uh, that you're qualified uh, because you've been through some stuff. Uh, you're not qualified uh, to deliver nobody uh, until you come out of some stuff uh, on your own. Uh, you're not qualified uh, to minister to anybody uh, because you went to school. Uh, because let me tell you something, baby, uh, a doctorate degree uh, is not going to 
help you to get through hard times. But you gotta learn how to go through. You're not qualified to be in leadership because you're educated. But when you go through some stuff and the Lord brings you out, that's when you're qualified. This is not deceiving to control nobody. We coming up to a platform. Reading a prayer, you got to know. Thank you, Jesus. The word of prayer. And is there anybody that's the land that you're qualified? Yes, you're qualified. You've been set free. You're qualified because you got the victory. Yes, you want to send a virtual high five and tell somebody. I'm qualified because the Lord made a way for me. I'm qualified because the Lord, there you go, gave me the victory. And so I wish I had two folks that were in this house that will stand to your feet. If they're going to get, get your family, you want to stand at home. If you're going to get, get your children. If you're gonna get, get your brothers, you're gonna stand on your feet. Yes, in the yard. If you're gonna get, get your sisters. Here's how you're gonna do it. Because you're qualified. Yes, not how in the world did I get qualified? Well, I'm glad that you asked because through dangers. Proverbs, he's the truth, Ecclesiastes, 
for Ecclesiastes now. He's a great preacher. This song of Solomon. Don't fail me now. Y'all got the clothes now through here. In the song of Solomon. He's a wonderful lover. I heard. I dare say. He's a wonderful counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Say it. He's a street preacher in Ezekiel. He's a rebuilder of the kingdom. In Daniel, he's the stone cut out with hands that someday will come back to the earth and establish a kingdom as a supreme ruler and king. Say yeah.
as wheat. To sift you, sift y'all rather, in the original text is wheat. But I pray for you. Why does he pray for Simon? Because everybody was depending on Simon. Because he was the rock. Some closing. Some of us have literally become tired with the burden of leading. Get tired of being strong. And this is why I really don't get consumed with Facebook and social media because people will paint a beautiful picture. But behind that screen is a person jacked up just like you. We don't really need a whole lot of followers. I don't, we don't really need a whole lot of people to subscribe to our Platform. We don't need to. I'm not talking about Oak Grove. I'm talking about individually. Because we have now shifted to where people validate us. So seemingly if I got a whole lot of friends, then I'm validated because they like me. But if I don't have any friends, then I'm never going to be anything. And so because certain people got a lot of followers, we allow them to validate us. One thing God set me down in the midst of this pandemic was to say, stop allowing people to validate your success. Because I was looking at whatever, no, this was, you know, somebody else doing this, somebody, stop looking at what somebody else is doing. And that's why we end up missing our mark. Because we call on what somebody else is doing. They got a husband, why ain't got one? They got a wife, why ain't got one? They got a house, don't even pay the tithes, why don't I have a woman? Why does it seem like sickness is even coming to my family? The burden of being a leader. Why does it seem like I can't catch a break? As soon as I get back and focus in the communion of God, here comes a jellyfish, catfish, no good joker. When I say joker, that's not geared to just the men. <laughs> let me tell you, let me put it like this. The spirit of Jezebel is real. There are some people that are out to just pull on us. Thank you, Jesus. And we make ourselves so vulnerable. Because we, everybody wants somebody to like them. We don't want no haters. But I realized, and I'll share it with Brother Curtis, is that when I look around myself, the friends I had in high school, a lot of them don't even communicate. We don't communicate much. Not because I got bougie. Because that's, that's sometimes what our problem is. We, God bless us with a little something. We think we're better than somebody else. Oh, I moved out of the neighborhood and I'm better than you. Not realizing all grades are six feet. That's right. That's right. Amen. But I look back. I said, oh my gosh, where do those people go? And God help me understand. I hope this don't offend nobody. But if it, is, if it offends you in Jesus' way, then so let it be. A lot of people that I view as friends did not deserve the title of yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't need you to tell me when I'm right. Much as I don't like it, I need you to tell me when I'm wrong. I need somebody that's going to help me better my credit score. I need somebody that's shooting for something. Because if I'm the smartest one, I think I got it all. I need friends that's going to challenge me. 
to be my best self. I need folks that when I get in a pity party, they'll come and sit there for a few minutes. Slap me and say, get yourself back up. We ain't got time to be crying the blues. I'm trying to help somebody. I need some real friends. But now we have got it tripped up to where people are following us. They like us. They're in our home. They are friends. But I can count on one hand. I mean, the friends I have. But you know what? <laughs> I'd rather have two good friends than 100 cat dishes. I'm talking about somebody I can call in, 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 in the midnight hour. When I get in the jam, they ain't always asking, well, why do you do that? No, they can rebuke me later. But right now, I need your help. Why? Because I have too much to lose. I'm already on my time. God bless you on today. If you desire to be a part of our church family, inbox us. We are here, Oak Grove, NBC, Apex. God is truly doing a great thing in our ministry. And you, we want you to be a part. We want you to be a part of what God is doing here. Come over here and get blessed. The best way to be blessed is to hang around blessed folks. Hating on you. That's right. Amen. So when folks get new cars, new houses, when folks get married, and I'm still waiting, I learn how to praise God for them because the best is still yet, still yet, still yet to come. And I just want to do something right about now. I just want to do something right now.
will not say, but that's where we want Jesus. It's me. Come on, 